So we're going to look at how to do a simple interrupted suture. For this we're going to need a needle driver, a myo scissors, which is the one with the broad end over here, and the uh, um, small end over here. And this scissors, the myo scissors, is used to cut material. Next we're going to need a forceps, a surgical forceps, which is the one with the teeth over here. And finally, we are going to need our suture. So, how we are going to place our needle into the needle driver? We're going to use the prox uh, the distal end of the needle driver and the distal end of the needle as well. So, over here at the very edge where the needle goes over into the thread, there's an area called the swag. You do not want to grasp it over here, that's something you do not want to do. Because if you grasp it over here, it can break off and your thread can come loose from your needle. So we're going to use the end of the needle, but not the absolute end. So you want to be over here, like this. And the final thing that we need to look at is that we're going to place a needle in a 90 degree angle opposite to the needle driver. So once all of that is in place, we can start with our suture. And we are going to start with everting the skin. You're going to grasp it with our surgical forceps, evert it. And you're going to put the needle in a perpendicular fashion into the skin. And once you're inside, you can supinate your wrist. And your needle will come out in the middle. And you can supinate it further until your needle is in the middle of our wound over here. Next, we can use the surgical forceps, the teeth at the bottom over here, to use the teeth and hold the needle like this. Next, close it. Once you have a firm grasp of the needle, you can let loose of your needle driver. Follow the curvature of the needle and pull the needle through like this. You don't want to pull it all the way through because then the thread can be in your way and it's harder to maneuver. Next, you want to place it back into your needle driver in the correct fashion. Evert the skin at the opposite sides. And you need to look at how deep you went the previous time. And at the same depth, you're going to enter this tissue again and come out of the skin. At the same, uh, at the same area as at the opposite side. So you want to be about let's say half a centimeter from the wound edge and at the same level um, up as the opposite side. Pull it all the way through until you have something of let's say uh, three centimeter, five centimeter of threads at the uh, opposite side. So now we're going to do our instrument tie which means we're going to go um, over our needle driver one, two. So at the first step, you're going to do two with the long leg of your uh, thread over here. So again, away from you. One, two. Grasp the short ends. And then you're going to slide the long ends, the loops, over the short ends like this. And you start off with your short end away from you and your long end at your side you're going to switch them. So that's something important to remember. You're always going to switch uh, positions. And switching positions will result in the flat knot that you see over here. If you do not, do not switch positions, it's all tangled up like this. And that's something you want to avoid. So you want to really pull to the opposite side. Then you get a nice flat uh, knot over here. So. We started off with going away from us, one, two. Now we're going to go towards us one time. So one time, one loop towards us, like this. We're going to go and do it again. So towards us, one loop. Next, grasp the short end again, pull it over and switch sides. And there we go. And then one more time, so we went away from us, one, two, then towards us, one, 
and now we have to go away from us again but only one time so the sequence is 2 1 1 and always switch sides so away from us towards us away from us towards us that's something you always need to alternate so for our final throw away from us one time grasp the short leg pull it through and switch sides again like this so this is our um, simple interrupted suture and now we just have to pull it to one side so that the knot is not inside of the wound because if the knot is over the wound then the knot can get into the scar tissue and it's harder to remove the knot um, afterwards and now only one more thing to do and we're finished we are going to grasp the two legs and pull it to the side and we're going to cut it at the length of the broad uh, side of the Maya scissors so we're going to use it as a measure and we're going to cut it at that level and that's our simple interrupted suture